Welcome to Witness Wednesday here on the Walk Boldly with Jesus podcast. I'm your host, Katherine Duggan. However, each Wednesday, I will have a guest give their witness of how God is working in their lives. Hearing how God is working in other people's lives shows us how deeply He cares for each one of us individually. Listening to these experiences will help your faith grow. I am so blessed to be able to share these with you. Let's get started. Today's witness is from my good friend Jim. Jim is the caretaker of relics. If you don't know what relics are, you are in for a real treat because Jim will tell us all about them today. He witnesses today how he learned about relics, who gave him his first one, and how he began his journey of rescuing relics and making sure they get the veneration they deserve. He has hundreds of relics that he takes to various churches so that we can all spend some time with the saints and our Lord Jesus Christ. The recording of this speech is from a talk he gave at a church before the relics exhibit opened. I am sure you will like hearing his story as much as I did. It's very informational too, which is great. Take it away, Jim. My name is Jim Robson. I live in Draken. Um, I am the caretaker of these most holy and precious objects of the church triumphant saints. I've been um, collecting for over 20 years I first received the first one from a nun because we would constantly be talking about saints and then one day she surprised me with a relic and I had absolutely no idea what a relic was. So uh, I've been collecting those since I was about 10 years old, taught how to collect things by my father and having something so unique of course triggered my collector spirit so I started to find out more about it, find out more about it. And also I started finding myself being able to find some relics. So um, I did, because I've been a, a cradle Catholic, I knew how holy the saints were. I've always studied the saints, but I knew how special they were. So I went to my spiritual advisor at the time and asked him what I should be doing with it, since they are such holy objects and he did give me permission to rescue the relics with the intent of giving them the veneration that they should have. So that's a very quick story of the, how I started collecting. Um, I did find out tons of stuff about them and one of the first questions all people always ask me is what are the different classes of relics? So there's three different classes of relics. The first class relic is a relic of the saint's body, most likely his bone, could be hair, could be skin, could be something else like that. Or all the relics of Jesus are considered first class relics. The second class relic is something that the saint used or that belonged to the saint. So clothing, habits, book. Um, I even have a piece of the coffin of St. Therese of the Flower. All those objects are second class relics. Third class relics are um, the ones that you get in like in prayer cards and such. Basically a third class relic is something that touched another relic. Usually they take a piece of cloth, a big piece of cloth, touch it to a first class relic of St. Padre Pio or anybody and make it a third class relic, attach that to like a prayer card so you have a third class relic. So a third class relic is something that touched another relic or something the saint touched. So um, you're all invited to make third class relics of your objects that you may have brought with you, your rosaries, prayer cards, pictures of family. Um, there's a couple of interesting stories I have of people making third class relics of different things. There was a presentation and in the middle of the room this lady all of a sudden turned around and still started running towards the door. She wanted to go get her purse or license out of her wallet because she just saw St. Christopher and make the license a third class relic so he would help protect her. The, one of the other things I 
highly recommend is while you're praying with the saints, asking for their intercession, is to settle down and be as quiet as you can and listen for them to talk back. Prayer is a two-way conversation. You're, in, you're asking the saints to intercede for you to God, but you'd also want to stop and listen for a response. I've had many people stop and say, St. Joseph wanted to talk to me, or say somebody else, and it's a, it just got this overwhelming sense of peace. We do have notebooks at, at the center with the relics. If anybody has anything that they think is significant or something that they'd want to remember, please take a notebook or pen and write it out. I don't know about you guys, but this hair is getting a lot grayer, and as it gets grayer, something happens to the brain cell, and I can't remember as much. I was at a show like this before I started doing it, and Saints, I don't know, I can't remember. It was wonderful, the sense of peace and the sense that he was talking to me, but it's been five, six years, and I have no idea who he is. So. Please, if something comes to you, get a paper and write it out. Many of you hopefully already have favorite saints, um, and hopefully um, they'll be over there and be able to talk to you. There are, like it was mentioned, over 125 different saints and relics of Jesus in his passion in this collection at the moment. And hopefully, you'll be able to make friends or renew your friendship with your favorites, but also look for somebody new, somebody that connects with you for various reasons. Most of the biographies that are next to the roads have a little bit of their story and they have a list of the patron saints. Find the saint that has the same interest that you have. Find the saint of your birthday and try to connect with them. Most of the saints, to become a saint, had a healing miracle. And there's many of us here that for various reasons need different types of healings. So we're here on earth fighting our battle. They're upstairs in heaven to help us on our way. One of the most precious ways that God uses is healings. So look for healings, expect healings tonight, and pray for them. It's one of the most generous things that God does. He wants us to be whole and complete. He wants us to be healed. He wants us to get to heaven. Jesus is the healer. The passion relics are a huge source of healing. The relic of the true cross is there. The relic of the crown of thorns. Saint that pierced Jesus inside, Saint Longinus, he's over there. Ask for healings and expect them. I have been blessed to have feedback come back to me and say that there has been miracles, has been healings. A quick story, um, I was actually asked to go to the hospital in Boston, Mass General, um, with some relics, a friend of a friend, pastor's friend or a friend, you get the idea. Um, but they asked us if we could come down and see the person. She was, um, she had an operation, it was botched, it was not good, and instead of helping her, it hurt her, and she was close to um, going to see the Lord. But we went down there, took about four or five different relics, um, prayed, the family came, the friend, a friend came, some more, a couple more members of the family, the doctor came in, the nurses came in. We prayed for probably about three hours. That's just because we like to pray. It doesn't take three hours, but in this case, it didn't happen to. We were there for that one time. When we walked in, typically, you know, how somebody's in the hospital and they're very, um, basically sleepy and no, no responses. By the time we left, she was much more adamant. 
I didn't see this person for a long time again, the person who was a friend of the friends for months, but when we did again, we asked how the lady was doing. So the report back was that she was going to go to hospice the next step to be taken care of till the end of life. But instead of doing that, she did go home. So she recovered and went home instead. So people often have a question about why doesn't God heal all the time? Um, Father's much more equipped to answer this, but I, I usually mention three things. And I think they're up there at the top of the list. Forgiveness is two of them, and listening is a third one. God loves us tremendously. And there's never going to be a question about that. But often, we need to ask for forgiveness or something that we did, i.e. the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of confession. Also, the second part of the forgiveness is that we also have to forgive others, like at the Our Father. That is so, so very important. So the third one, um, is I, I like to do a little bit of a story, if you don't mind, I'll spend a couple of minutes on it. I have a friend, his name is Michael, and I was talking to him a week and a half ago about adoration. And, um, you know, some people have a hard time, you know, what, what to do at adoration. So I, I was picking his brain to, to figure it out. And so I could, um, try to help other people. One of the first things that he said his mother taught him was to listen. When you're at adoration, you're praying. And as I mentioned before, praying is a two-way conversation. So you need to express your prayers to God that listen for the answers. One thing that we, we all know and love is that we're supposed to do the will of God. God's will is so good, so important to us, and since he's a little bit smarter than most of us, he knows what's better for us. So he was explaining to me, and very rightly so, that um, you need to listen to God and know what his will is. And the reason why I was having this conversation with him is because he's been going to adoration since he was basically young. Um, Conceived and born, and now he's a grand 10 years old. So I thought it was very wise for a 10 year old to know that much, and he actually taught me something. So I have to share it with you guys. Another problem that many people have with our faith is that if it got us all well, all good, and all I'm looking for looking forward to us being in heaven and you know why is there evil God doesn't will evil God lets evil happen to us and unfortunately in our lives something bad is almost always going to happen to us sometime or another um, I mean the fall, um, Adam and Eve, you know, that's what happened. But God knew, and God loved us, and God sent his only son. The great, greatest sin was us nailing God to the cross. But the greatest grace that we get is redemption. It's wonderful. Um, there's a couple other things that we can use for examples. Job in the Old Testament. It was wonderful, God fearing, loved God, but the devil wanted to test him. The devil did, got Job passed the test, and even greater graces were given to him. His wealth was returned, his family was returned. The other one is the other half of the race, you women that, that have been blessed to carry a child. It's not necessarily easy. It's not an evil, but it certainly hurts at that point.
moment of childbirth, but you're all full of joy afterwards. The point that I wish I could spend an hour explaining would be, even though there's evil, even though there is bad things that happen to us, ultimately God in His grace will give us something even better. So today is All Saints Day, and what's your name? Catherine. Catherine. Oh, Saint Catherine. How are you doing today? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I have to crack one joke. I know I'm not going to lose my day job so I can pretend I'm making jokes. But um, seriously, on the side of becoming saints, I love talking about the saints. I love the lives, the particular things that they're known for. There's biographies with the different relics that have a touch of different things about the saints. So uh, if you get a chance, please read some of those. Um, one thing I found out recently, a lot of people want um, to know more about certain saints and would like to copy of some of those biographies. I even got a long email from last weekend saying that the woman wanted me to write a book and include these biographies on them. So, um, so feel free, if, if there's one particular biography that you want a copy of, give me your email address and I would be glad to um, send you the document. There's um, tons and tons of great books out there also on the saints. Um, I, I find it one of the best ways and it, it's a wonderful way of getting to know a little bit more about them so you can be a little bit more like them. But you're not supposed to be St. Francis, you're not supposed to be St. Catherine, you're supposed to be St. Your Name. And just like the fingerprints that we all have, our soul has a fingerprint, well, an imprintation that God has given us, a mission that He has given us. And that's where the listening and knowing what God's will for each of us is so very important. When you're doing God's will, you will be blessed, you will be blessed, <laughs> you will be blessed. So, with all those different things. There's, there's a little exercise that I haven't done in a while, but I would like to do it with you guys for just two minutes, if, if you're willing to do it. I'm still taking a class. I might be 65 years old. But I'm taking a class, and it's wonderful. And um, it happens to be the Encounter School of Ministries, but we do some things that are declarations. So let me read one or two of these, and if you'd like, respond back after I say it. I'll, I'll say it again, just repeat after me. And these are prayers that I feel that are sure to be answered by God. Holy Spirit, teach me how you want me to pray. Holy Spirit, teach me how you want me to pray. Come Holy Spirit, and fill my heart with the love of Jesus. Come Holy Spirit, and fill my heart with the love of Jesus. Jesus, fill my heart with joy. Jesus, fill my heart with joy. Jesus, shine your light on our path when we need you the most. Jesus, shine your light on our path when we need you the most. Jesus, bless those who are struggling. Jesus, bless those who are struggling. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I'm wonderfully made. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I'm wonderfully made. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I'm especially loved. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I'm especially loved. So thank you very much, and may God bless you, and um, let me know if there's anything else you um, would like to talk about. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I find everything about relics fascinating. If you are as fascinated or as curious as I am with all things related to relics, check out Jim's website, saintsbetogod.org. There will be a link for it in the show notes. There is a section on the website where you can fill out a form to request Jim to bring the relics to your church. 
This is a great opportunity to have Jim share his story with your whole parish and also to give your parish the gift of spending time with the relics. I hope you will check out his website. Thanks again, Jim. It was great to have you on the podcast. I hope you will come on again and share testimonies about the healings you have seen at your exhibits. We have all seen God working in our lives. However, we might not all be aware it is God who is working in our lives. This is why it's so important we start talking about it more. The more we share our experiences, the more people understand how God works and how much he truly loves us. If you would be willing to share any of your experiences of how God has worked in your life, please email me at katherine at findingtruenorthcoaching.com. C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E at finding true north coaching.com or you can click on the link below it won't take up much of your time and your story could be just the story someone needs to hear today please prayerfully consider sharing your story everyone has one and the world needs to hear them i look forward to spending time with you again tomorrow remember jesus loves you and so do i i will have another witness for you next wednesday Have a blessed day.